Hello everyone. In today's video I talk about the differential privacy mechanisms. You will not understand much if you don't already know what differential privacy is, what noise is, what query sensitivity is, or what the privacy parameter epsilon represents. In case you did not nod along with this list, you can watch my previous videos on differential privacy, which are linked in the description of this video. But let's get on with it. Differential privacy mechanisms are tools in preserving privacy while enabling valuable data analysis. This video provides a technical examination of four key mechanisms. The Laplace mechanism, the Gaussian mechanism, exponential mechanism and private aggregation of teacher ensembles or simply paid. In the Laplace mechanism, Laplace distributed noise is added to the query results to ensure differential privacy. You can see the density function, the PDFs, for the Laplacian distribution here. For differential privacy, the mean is always zero and B, the second parameter, is the sensitivity of the query divided by the privacy parameter epsilon. Despite its simplicity and strong privacy guarantees, the Laplace mechanism may suffer from utility loss, particularly in scenarios with complex queries or highly sensitive data. Because the epsilon needed to conceal highly sensitive data increases the noise exponentially. Contrastingly, the Gaussian mechanism adds noise samples from a Gaussian distribution to query results, providing a smoother noise distribution and more flexibility in noise calibration. You can see the formula for the PDF, so for probability density function here. For differential privacy, the mean is also, like we have seen in the Laplace distribution, set to zero. However, the second parameter, the variance, only now depends on epsilon and not on the sensitivity of the query. Therefore, while it is simple, simpler even than the Laplace mechanisms, it requires careful calibration to balance privacy and utility effectively, and it may not be suitable for scenarios with nonlinear queries or heterogeneous data distributions. I am in fact not aware of anybody who uses um, Gaussian mechanisms anymore for differential privacy. The exponential mechanism works very different from these two distributions. It selects items from a database while preserving privacy by probabilistically selecting items based on the relevance to the query. It quantifies the privacy utility trade-off through the sensitivity of the scoring function and the privacy budget. In practice, it looks like this. For every possible outcome, the mechanism computes probabilities for selecting this outcome based on its score. This probability looks like this mathematical monster here, and the only important thing is that it depends on the sensitivity, delta F, and the privacy parameter, epsilon. This mechanism enables personalized and context-aware data selection, making it ideal for scenarios such as personalized recommendations and decision-making processes. However, it may pose computational challenges, especially for large datasets or complex queries. Finally, private aggregation of teacher ensembles or simply paid, leverages multiple teacher models trained on disjoint subsets of the data to provide robust privacy guarantees. Each teacher model is trained on a partition of the data, ensuring that no individual teacher has access to the entire dataset. During the training of each teacher model, noise is added to the training labels. This noise addition is typically achieved using a noise distribution, such as we have previously discussed, uh, Laplace or Gaussian. The prediction from the teacher models are aggregated using techniques such as voting or averaging to produce a final prediction. This mechanism is particularly well suited for collaborative machine learning tasks such as federated learning or model aggregation across distributed datasets. However, it requires substantial computational resources and coordination among data distributors. Now to recap the strengths and weaknesses of the differential privacy mechanisms. The Laplace mechanism offers strong privacy guarantees and straightforward implementation. However, it may suffer from utility loss in some scenarios and be sensitive to query complexity. The Gaussian mechanism provides smoother noise distribution and flexibility in noise calibration. Nonetheless, it requires careful calibration and may not be optimal for all scenarios. The exponential mechanism enables personalized data selection and quantifies the privacy utility trade-off. However, it may pose computational challenges and complexity for large datasets or complex queries. PATE, private aggregation of teacher ensembles, offers robust privacy guarantees and facilitates collaboration among data contributors. However, it requires substantial computational resources and coordination challenges. In conclusion, each differential privacy mechanism offers unique technical attributes and trade-offs. 
To select the most appropriate mechanism, data scientists must carefully consider the specific requirements of their tasks, including the nature of the queries, the sensitivity of the data, and the available computational resources. By understanding the technical nuances of each mechanism, researchers can navigate the complex landscape of privacy and utility effectively, advancing the field of differential privacy towards a more privacy-preserving and insightful future. That's it for this video. If you found it interesting and you learned something, consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. Also, leave a comment to let me know what you think. See you in the next video.